So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15.2 Beta 3 early last week and I have some thoughts on it so I wanted to do a follow up video to let you guys know how performance has been doing, how battery has been going, and also a couple new features that we found in the settings that we didn't talk about in the first one. But before we continue, Paperlike is actually releasing new products for the first time ever. So everybody knows them as a screen protector company, which they are amazing at. But now they're doing some Apple Pencil grips, some cleaning kits, and also like a canvas style iPad Pro case if you guys do want to check them out for the holiday season. And also know that Black Friday, they do 15% off the entire store and it's their only real sale that they do all year. So by all means, first link in the description below. Thanks to Paperlike for always sponsoring the channel and always kind of believing in what we do over here. But without further ado, let's talk about what's new and what we found with iPadOS 15.2 Beta 3. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. So first off, I always like to go into the settings, talk about the actual one that we're on. So as you guys can see, just to prove it to you that we are on the beta program, we're on 15.219C5044B, which means we are getting closer and closer to that actual public release, which Apple has a few things they need to really touch on in order to make sure that it's working correctly. But the first thing that I wanna do is actually get into the battery performance and see how we've been doing over time. So if we go into the settings, we scroll down to battery, let it load up for a second. Let's go over the last 10 days, as you can see, we were pretty much dead all of yesterday. We didn't really use the iPad too much. But here we're looking at about two hours and 41 minutes of screen on time. And if we go on a day like, let's say, Saturday, for instance, we have three hours and 55 minutes of screen on time, which took about 100% of our battery, which is absolutely absurd. So again, I watch a lot of football on the weekends. So YouTube TV, one hour and 50 minutes took up 70% of battery. That is absolutely insane. PS Remote Play, 18% about an hour and two minutes. So I probably could have played, you know, PS remote play for about five, six hours before it died. But again, YouTube TV killed the battery life that day. We, let's go on a day like Friday, where it looks like we got a decent amount of screen on time. We have five hours and 13 minutes of screen on time, two and a half hours of screen off time, and we're a little less than 100%. So on a day like this, LumaFusion took up 21%. Spotify took up about 20% with another hour and 10 minutes. PDF element, 32 minutes, which great application if you guys need a PDF editor. YouTube took about 26 minutes, 10%. So we got a little bit better battery life, but again, we probably could have squeezed out a little bit more, but keep in mind that the home and lock screen, because I left it on, took up about an hour and 20 minutes, took up 22%. So that just having the screen on by itself is draining the battery at a pretty big clip. So about 20% of my battery goes away if I just leave the screen on after about an hour, which is not a good sentiment. But let's go on a day like Tuesday, six hours and 11 minutes of screen on time. We took up a little over 100%, so we probably plugged in. LumaFusion, hour and a half, 37 minutes. So I probably could have edited it for about four hours, but overall battery life just needs to improve in my opinion. And again, we still are testing this low power mode. So if we go here, it goes into low power mode, it saves you a little bit more, but for right now we'll leave it off. So now we've gone over all the battery life, let's look into some of the new features that we saw, and there weren't too many. So first off, if you go down to your weekly summary or your morning summary, and that looks a little bit different. So I don't know if you guys remember, but Apple quickly changed the morning summary and the end of day summary to look kind of like this, this like collage notification style thing, which I absolutely hated. It looked weird, not a fan of it at all, but it looks like Apple actually switched back to it pretty quickly. So if you go in here and click on your morning summary, you now have a couple things. So first off, it's listed for you. And secondly, you have this new little down arrow, which definitely wasn't there before. So you have a little down arrow, you still have your X right there. You have your three dots, so you can interact with the notification, which is nice to see. So mute for an hour, mute for today, deliver immediately, clear them all, turn it off, and then go into view settings also. So it takes you into the settings for Gmail itself for that notification summary. So again, that's what's new with notification summary. No big deal, just another way that Apple is, again, giving us the same information. And I'm kind of glad they got rid of that collage. I was not a fan of the collage whatsoever. So the next one's actually within the music application. So if you go into the music application, and I'm personally not an Apple Music user, I'm a Spotify user, as you guys can see with my custom icon down here. Big fan of Spotify. I've been with them for like seven, eight years now at this point, so I'm gonna stick with them. But if you are an Apple Music, inside of Playlist, you now have a search function. You actually didn't have a search function inside of individual playlists. So now you can search for albums, you can search for artists, you can search for the names of the songs inside of your own made playlist and find them that way. And then lastly, if you go back into the settings, if you scroll back up and if we go into Wi-Fi and then click on the three little dots right there or the little information button, we now have a new moniker where it says limit IP address tracking, which before we had something in there, but it was named something totally different, which I think it had to do with private relay. 
but now it just gives you something a little bit more kind of in your face to let you know what is going on. So basically you turn this on to limit IP address tracking by hiding your IP address from known trackers in Mail and Safari. So this is only for Mail and Safari and the Mail app for the native Mail application. So it won't work with your Spike Mail, it won't work with Spark Mail, it won't work with any third party. This is purely for the Mail application for the iPad Pro made by Apple. And then the last thing I do want to mention is some bugs. So I'm going to overlay a little bit of B-roll showing off exactly what I've been dealing with when it comes to applications. So for Twitter, for instance, it auto logs me out. I don't know why it does that, but this has never happened before. And I think it has to do with this beta update because I've heard people have issues with their applications crashing. And then another thing that does happen to me is inside of LumaFusion. So the way I normally edit with LumaFusion is with my magic keyboard, which is over here, and the delete button normally works. So the hard delete button, which is right here on the top right hand corner of my keyboard, it does work normally, but sometimes it doesn't work. So that key itself, the delete button doesn't work inside of LumaFusion. I have to, again, quit out of the app, go into multitasking, quit out of it, and then reload it. Again, there's no data loss when it comes to that happening, and then it does work again. But it's just another step that I have to take in order to just delete a clip outside of this timeline that I'm currently using. So overall, we need some bug fixes that need to be improved. Applications need to be improved as well. And then we're getting some little tangible differences, but nothing that's going to change kind of your day to day workflow with the iPad Pro. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal one. So as you guys saw, and as I mentioned, iPadOS 15.2 Beta 3 has actually been pretty buggy for me, and it's a little bit disappointing because first, we had all the battery issues that came with iPadOS in the beta program, and those battery issues persist. You know, we're not getting that eight hour battery life that we all want. But then also, we've had some app crashing, we've had some magic keyboard dis disconnectivity, if that's even a word. But overall, I mean, from a performance standpoint, I guess it's fine, like there's no data loss. At no point have I lost any data, whether it is with LumaFusion or Twitter or Safari or in my drive, in my Google Drive, whatever the case may be, I haven't lost any data. But again, my efficiencies are getting a little bit lessened because of the fact that I have to like reset applications, re-log into things, and I don't really know why that's happening. That has never happened with iPadOS beta at all, dating back to iPadOS 13.0, which is when I first started in the beta program. But again, outside of that, there's zero data loss, so it's nothing like catastrophic when it comes to it. And again, I have to remember that I am in the beta program, so it's not supposed to be working perfectly and it's not supposed to be ready for the public, hence why it's in the beta program. So hopefully Apple does tweak those things, makes those adjustments, and gets us back to a more full-fledged, kind of efficient process and experience for the users. But again, overall, battery life needs to improve, bug fixes need to occur, and again, I'm all for these new features coming out, but I'd rather Apple focus on making sure that everything works perfectly than just trying to add little things and little changes that don't really mean much in the grand scheme of things. Leave a comment down below as to like maybe what software you're currently using. Do you always stay up to date, as up to date as possible with the public releases? Are you in the beta program? Do you kind of just go by main update? Like, do you wait for 15 to come out and then 16, or do you kind of iterate throughout that? Always curious to know what people's mindsets are when upgrading. For me personally, for both beta and regular updates, I always update as soon as possible. Whether it's 15.1.1 or this one, which is 15.2 beta 3, I'm always updating as soon as possible. I don't really know why. I justify it to myself by saying it's for privacy reasons, right? Everything Apple's doing does give you a little bit more privacy, so that's how I justify it. But overall, Apple does need to step up this beta program a little bit more before it's ready for that public release, which ideally will come out post Thanksgiving before the actual Christmas break. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.